Hallo, Peter! Und Spreckel, der Haus in Pfeffer ist nach. Ein Schnitzel bei der Ruben Saarkraut. Die Flüten. Raus mit den Schnitzel, warm sie braten. Je mehr Verfatten und Blüten an der Saar braten in die sticken Häuser und stehlen das Hucken. Hallo, Peter! says it isn't fair. And the fair note that's a hooking. He's being oppressed. And the stickle hustle. And the hustle. He says it's an outrage. I don't know what it is. The girl says. The girl says. And the girl says. Quiet! The fuhrer says. Against your anti-tank rifle, he simply can't win. <laughs> This is the boy's anti-tank rifle, which is the weapon used by the infantry soldier to combat enemy tanks and armored fighting vehicles. It is a very accurate single-shot weapon with a simple bolt action similar to that of the service rifle. The caliber is 55 or just over one half inch. At ranges of 300 yards and under, the bullet will penetrate all parts of enemy light tanks, even the front, which has been recently armored up. Its maximum useful range is 300 yards, but is better fired at 100 yards. Whenever possible, fire should be directed against that part of the vehicle where the crew is usually placed. This shows the customary arrangement of the crew within a tank. When piercing armor plate, the destructive power of the bullet is greatly increased by the interior shrapnel effect of the armor shattering. These pieces of steel will inflict casualties on the crew. For maximum penetration, the angle of impact should not exceed 20 degrees. At angles of impact much greater than 20 degrees, the penetration power is reduced, and the bullet may even ricochet off without inflicting any damage. The anti-tank rifle fire gives good results against medium and heavy tanks 
when the bullet hits in the seams or joints, such as the gun bands, or junction points of the turret and hull. These hits cause burring over of working surfaces and produce jamming. Equally effective is a hit on the tank treads. These hits will disable or delay medium or heavy tanks. They can then be destroyed by anti-tank guns or field artillery. Here we see the near side view of the anti-tank rifle. The weight of the rifle is 36 pounds. The magazine containing five rounds of ammunition weighs two pounds, seven ounces. Normally it is carried in a vehicle, although it can be carried for short distances by a man. I said, a man. <laughs> Here is the recoil reducer. And this is the foresight, a knife blade aperture type. This is the barrel of 55 caliber, and this is the adjustable back sight which is calibrated for two ranges, 300 yards and 500 yards. The practice of firing at 500 yards is now obsolete and will no longer be used. To inflict maximum damage and obtain a more critical point of aim, 300 yard sighting only will be used in combat. The range is set for 300 yards by turning the lever to the left. Here is the safety catch which, as in the service rifle, is off when pushed forward and on when turned back. Forward, ready to fire. Back, on safety. Always keep the catch back on safety, except when firing. Here is the pistol grip, trigger, and trigger guard. This is the cheek rest, and here is the shoulder piece grip. This is the shoulder piece, which is padded with flexible rubber. In the shoulder piece is an oil well and brush for oiling purposes. Offside view of the rifle. This is the adjustable front support. The rifle may be raised or lowered by turning this sleeve. Bolt mechanism. The bolt is similar to that of your service rifle and is worked in the same manner. To remove the bolt, push the safety catch forward, raise the bolt lever, and pull the bolt back. This is the ejector stop. Press the ejector stop down and take out the bolt. The top lip is the ejector. The one underneath is the extractor. These are the locking lugs. The small hole in front of the bolt is the striker way, and this is the striker. This is the cocking piece to which the striker is attached. To replace the bolt, the locking lugs must be covered by the ejector and extractor, the cocking piece base in line with the extractor. Push the bolt forward in the body of the rifle, turn bolt lever down, press the trigger, and apply the safety catch. Loading and firing. This is the magazine which holds five rounds of armor-piercing ammunition. The magazine is loaded by holding it firmly and pressing down on the platform while inserting the cartridges base first. The magazine spring is depressed as the cartridges fill the magazine. Here we see the operations of firing. To the magic of X-ray animation, 
Let us see what takes place inside the rifle when operated. When the bolt lever is raised, the cocking piece and striker is cocked, compressing the striker spring. As the bolt is pulled back, the magazine spring forces a cartridge down. The bolt going forward pushes the cartridge into the breech. As the bolt lever turns down, the bolt locking lugs go into slots in the rifle body, thus locking the bolt firmly in position. The cocking piece is held in check by contact with the sear. When the trigger is squeezed, it depresses the sear, releasing the cocking piece and striker. The striker explodes the powder charge. As the bolt is withdrawn, the extractor pulls the empty cartridge case from the breech. As the ejector comes in contact with the ejector stop, it ejects the empty cartridge from the rifle. The magazine spring forces another cartridge into place. The bolt going forward pushes the cartridge into the breech. Turning the bolt lever down locks the bolt and the rifle is again ready to fire. Recoil reduction. Most of the recoil of the anti-tank rifle is taken up by the recoil reducer on the muzzle, a heavy buffer spring inside this cylinder, and the flexible rubber shoulder piece. Here we see a sectional view of the rifle muzzle and recoil reducer. As the bullet leaves the muzzle, it is followed by high-speed gas, a portion of which are deflected back by the curved surface of the recoil reducer. These expanding gases exert a forward pressure on the deflector and thus counteract a good portion of the recoil. Without this device, the back pressure of the gases are unrestrained and the recoil is much greater. Here again, we see the recoil reducer in action. The strong buffer spring inside this cylinder absorbs further recoil as the barrel slides backward when the rifle is fired. Finally, the flexible rubber padding of the shoulder piece protects the shoulder from shock. Aiming. In taking aim, the back sight is adjusted to the required range. The tip of the foresight is brought into the center of the back sight. Target approaching. When the vehicle approaches head-on, aim directly at the most vulnerable spots. Do not fire until the target is in range. Target approaching diagonally. When aiming and firing at a vehicle moving diagonally across the field of fire, aim should be taken at the front edge of the tank. It is very important to maintain the swing of the rifle while squeezing the trigger. Target moving directly across the field of vision. When aiming and firing at a vehicle moving directly across the field of fire, it is necessary to keep a lead equal to the length of the vehicle in front of the part to be hit. This lead must be maintained while pressing the trigger. If this lead is not maintained, or the aim taken directly on the target, the shot will be behind the target and will probably hit something that was not intended. Why don't you shoot where you're looking? Training practice with dummy ammunition. Dummy ammunition is always used in training for safety. This ammunition may be easily identified by the red grooves on the cartridge body. Holding and loading. Lie down with the body straight behind the rifle. Grasp the shoulder piece grip with the left hand. Raise the shoulder piece to the shoulder. Turn the safety catch forward. Put the loaded magazine on. Open and close the bolt. Apply the safety catch. The rifle is now loaded. To unload, push the safety catch forward, press the magazine catch with the palm of the hand and remove the magazine from the rifle. 
Open and close the bolt. Press the trigger. Apply the safety catch. The rifle is now unloaded. Loading and firing practice with dummy ammunition. Take the lying load position. Raise the rifle to the shoulder. Push the safety catch forward. Place the magazine in the rifle. Open and close the bolt. Apply the safety catch. Adjust the sight to the required range. Turn safety catch forward. Take aim and fire. Continue until all five rounds have been fired. Notice that the bolt cannot be pushed forward after the fifth round has been fired and ejected. Remove the empty magazine. Push the bolt forward, open and close the bolt, press the trigger and apply the safety catch. Stripping and cleaning. To remove the bolt, raise the bolt lever and pull fully to the rear. Press down the ejector stop and remove the bolt. Clean thoroughly with a piece of flannelette, leaving it slightly oiled. Replace the bolt and apply the safety catch. Recoil reducer. To strip the recoil reducer, use the combination tool. Unscrew the three deflector screws and remove the deflector. Clean the reducer and deflector thoroughly with a piece of oily flannelette. Remove all traces of oil with a piece of dry flannelette. The reducer must be quite free of oil before firing. Assemble the deflector using the combination tool. Magazine stripping. To strip, press in the stud on the bottom plate of the magazine and slide the plate off, carefully controlling the spring as it comes out. As the spring is quite strong, Something like this may happen if you are careless. To assemble the magazine, press down the spring firmly and slide the bottom cover into place. The magazine is only cleaned after a gas attack. Cleaning. Cleaning materials are similar to those used for the service rifle except that a collapsible rod takes the place of the pull-through. To prepare the rod for use, assemble the four sections. Pull the cord tight and secure by inserting it in the notch of the handle. For daily cleaning, first remove the bolt. Insert a piece of dry flannelette, four by six inches, in the loop of the rod. Insert the rod in the muzzle end of the barrel and clean thoroughly, taking care to keep the rod central in the barrel to avoid wear at the muzzle. Remove the soiled flannelette from the loop of the rod and insert a smaller piece. Apply oil to the flannelette using the brush. Insert the rod in the muzzle and oil the barrel. Clean the breech with the bristle brush.
Clean all the remaining parts thoroughly and leave slightly oiled. Take good care of your rifle and keep it in first class condition. There is an old army saying, your rifle is like a woman. If you treat her right, she will never let you down. Say, now that's going a little too far. 